Hello, this is Reza Rad. In this video, I want to talk about two different ways of pulling SharePoint files or folders. Uh, one of them is SharePoint.contents, another is SharePoint.files. Uh, which one is better for which situation? I had a video previously that I explained how uh, to pull a list of uh, a group of files from a folder using a default SharePoint um, option in Power Query. Now uh, I had a question that what is the difference between SharePoint.contents whereas SharePoint.files. So I'm going to talk about that in this video. Let's go and talk about it. Uh, there are two different ways when you have um, your data files in the SharePoint to pull data from it. Uh, the default option that we have in Power Query, either in Power BI Desktop or in Power Query inside Power BI Service, inside the data flow, uh, inside Microsoft Fabric data flow, um, is only one of them. But there is another way as well. And there are differences between these two uh, depending on what you want to do. So let's switch into my screen so that I can talk about how this works. So let's say I have this um, SharePoint websites data that I'm going to use that as a source and I want to get data from it. So when I go to get data and I choose uh, from Power Query side, I choose to get data from SharePoint. You see that there are a few options in here. Um, let me enable zooming as well so that you can see it better. Um, so you see that there are a few options here. If we put aside the list parts of it, one of them is SharePoint folder, which in the previous video, I talked about how this feature works. You just choose it. You don't put the folder path in here. You just need to paste the site path. So no folder after it. Uh, and then when you click OK, this will scan all the files and folders within the SharePoint website. It might take a little bit of time. Uh, and it shows it to you. If you want to combine them together, you can start from here, but it's always the best choice to go to transform data, filter it based on the folder that you want, the type of files that you want. Uh, when I go to the transform data, uh, one of the things that you will notice is that this is using a function in Power Query behind the scene called SharePoint.files. SharePoint.files will bring all the files for you. Um, doesn't matter where they are inside that SharePoint uh, website. It might be down like seven levels of subdirectories or it might be in the root of the file. It will bring them all, but it has a, um, it has a column here that is folder path. This is telling you where that particular file is. For example, this is in this folder or it might be in another folder. And then you can go and filter it based on the folder that you want, which is a really good thing to do because you don't want to scan all the files. But uh, there are situations that you are looking for a particular file. So this ability to scan all the files might be a useful option. Uh, on the other hand side, there is another function that you don't get it through the UI, but you can actually try it in here. And if you don't see the formula bar, one way to see the formula bar is go to the view tab. Uh, inside the view tab, go and enable the formula bar that will enable this. Um, in the formula bar here is where you see the formula of that step that you have done in Power Query. So instead of SharePoint.files, I can use SharePoint.contents. Uh, and just make sure that when you type contents, C should be capital. Power Query is a case sensitive language. So if I say uh, SharePoint.contents, what you see now is that uh, the output is different. I actually put these side by side so that you can um, uh, see the, um, them beside each other. So uh, the first one, I would say this is SharePoint.files, capital F. Uh, the second one is SharePoint.folders. SharePoint.files bring all the files in all the subdirectories across the entire SharePoint website. And if you have a lot of content, a lot of documents in your SharePoint, this SharePoint file, this might take a while. Uh, whereas the second one, SharePoint.contents, only gives you the content of this root folder. In this case, all the folders and files within that uh, within that content, right? It's not just files, it is also folders. Um, for example, shared document is a folder. If I click on the table here uh, 
to see the details of it. To see the details, don't click on the table itself. Click somewhere blank in here, and then you'll see this detail window. If you click on the table, it will navigate down into that. So you see here under that shared document, I have some other folders and subfolders, and under that some files as well. And, and so if I want to go to that shared document folder, I'll click on that, that will navigate down. And now you see these folders and to show you how this compares with the uh, website that I have here, you see these are the same folders and files over there. Uh, so back to here, then what I can do if I want to go to a specific uh, folder in here, I can go and choose that folder, for example, this folder, and I see the files under that folder. So this is how I would navigate from the folder all the way to the um, to the files that I want. Whereas if it was in the previous stage and um, using full uh, SharePoint.files, what I could have done is that I could have come here and say, let's filter it based on Fitbit, um, the folder that I want and everything is filtered down. Uh, so these are two different methods. Now, what are the differences? Let's talk about that because they both look the same. Only one of them comes through the UI, the other one comes through the code. Uh, what are the differences? So um, the first one is easier to get started because it is coming through the UI. Uh, the only thing is that if you have a lot of documents, you have to be careful, you have to filter the data, but sometimes even filtering that data wouldn't really make it faster. Uh, because the way that the first one works is uh, not using the query folding, whereas the second one you'll go to the folders first. That is one of the differences performance-wise. SharePoint.contents performs better. The other thing is that sometimes you just want the folders. Now, not a lot of analytics using folder as a source to analyze that, but let's say, for example, I have a folder Mm, I have a, mm, a big folder that under that I have a lot of subfolders and I want to do some analysis based on when these folders have been created, modified, things like that. Nothing to do with the files itself. That can be done using .contents option but not using .files option. Uh, whereas the .files option would give me the ability to scan for any files wherever I want. So if I remove that filtered rows and I say, well, give me all the files with the extension of CSV. It doesn't matter where they are, it would bring them all within here. Uh, they might be in different places, like you see, for example, here, one of them is in a different folder, another is in a different folder. So very easy way to, to get to the files that you want and analyze them. Uh, whereas the other one, and, uh, if you want to do that scan, you have to do, uh, you have to do that process yourself. So uh, just finding my mouse so that we can go back here. Okay. Uh, so if you want, on the other hand side, to analyze folders, like for example, I want to see uh, the unique list of folders that I have under shared.documents and folders only, not the files, I can use this approach. And how would you filter based on folders only, not the files? The extension is one way, but there are also files that don't have extension. So just saying that the extension is blank is not, a, is not going to, uh, to be a good way to do it. Another column here is attributes. Uh, under attributes, we have some really good information. For example, if you see here, we have uh, the kind, which is folder. For example, if it is a file, the kind would be the file with the content type and things like that. So what we can do is that we can expand this attribute. Uh, and then under the scanned, uh, under the expanded attribute, I can then go and filter it only for the folder so that I can only get the folders. Uh, so this would give me only folders if I want to analyze that folder. Uh, an example of something like this would be, let's say, if I have a um, folder, like for example for myself, I have all my speaking engagements under a folder in uh, Dropbox, you see these are all the folders. So if I want to analyze it, like when was, when I spoke about this thing and that thing, I just need the folder name, the date and things like that. So something like this would be a good option for me to analyze it. Uh, whereas dot contents, uh, whereas dot files is giving me a different thing. Now let's go into the website so that I can talk about the performance aspects of it as well. Uh, both of these functions are supported in Dataflow, in Power Query Online. Um, like for example here, if I start Power Query, get data, and I say, 
and get data from SharePoint. You see we have the same options here, SharePoint folder. When we choose SharePoint folder and if we put the paste, uh, paste the path here, what is going to happen is going to use the same SharePoint.files um, option and would scan all the files as you see here. Um, then I will create it, it will bring it here, SharePoint.files give me a list of all files exactly like what it did in the desktop. I can though go and change it instead of .files, I can change it to be .contents. Now when I change it to be .contents, uh, then uh, it gives me folders and files, which is slightly different. So these two options are going to be uh, a little bit different in terms of the way that the query folding happens. It's, uh, the detail of that is quite, um, quite a lot to discuss in this video, but I have separate articles about query folding and things like that. Um, in nutshell, when you are getting data using SharePoint.files, if I go to this here, um, sorry, SharePoint.contents is this one, SharePoint.files is this one. So when I go and use SharePoint.files and then when I go and filter it based on the folder that I want, the performance uh, may not be as fast as going to use SharePoint.contents. Uh, like this one and then navigating to the folder that you want, right? Uh, the performance wise contents might work better if we are talking about large volume of uh, files, like large number of files. Uh, but the scanning capability of SharePoint.files is something you have to consider. So the difference in nutshell between SharePoint.files and SharePoint.contents is uh, that if you want to scan a file across the entire uh, website and find uh, a particular file that works um, based on this structure, it's a CSV file, it's with this naming standard, things like that, SharePoint.files works much better because it scans it much faster. Whereas SharePoint.contents is better, better when you want to scan the folders. SharePoint.contents performance wise works better because you can navigate down to the folder first and then get the content of that whereas SharePoint.files uh, performance wise when you are dealing with large number of uh, files in your SharePoint library uh, might not perform as well. Uh, similar to this we also have folder.files and folder.contents. Those because they would they normally work with on-premises folders. You need to have a gateway setup if you are using it in Power BI service. If you are using in desktop no gateway is needed. I have a separate video talking about the difference between folder.files and folder.contents uh, which is kind of the same scenario that we explained here. I hope you liked this video and um, this helps you in your Power BI and data analytics questions. If you have any questions put it in the comments below. Uh, until the next video, bye. Thank you.